According to global venture investor Alex Lazaro, unicorns are no longer a good metaphor for startups outside of Silicon Valley. In a higher interest rate environment, they'll need to get further on less money, or get to money sooner. In a 2020 article for Entrepreneur Magazine, he wrote about an alternative playbook coming from the frontier. His frontier includes those ecosystems operating outside of Silicon Valley, New York, London, and Shanghai. At the frontier, the growth at all costs model does not translate to the realities of the emerging startup ecosystems outside of Silicon Valley. For these startups, camels are the more appropriate metaphor. Camels adapt to multiple climates, survive without food or water for months, and, when the time is right, can sprint rapidly for sustained periods of time. Unlike unicorns, camels are not imaginary creatures living in fictitious lands. They are real, resilient, and can survive in the harshest places on earth. A startup, especially as a founder, is a calling. And if you're not called to that, if you can't get that out of your head, if you're not passionately engaged waking up at 3 in the morning and making notes, if it's not the first thing you're thinking about in the shower and, you know, convincing your family that this is the thing that you need to dedicate your life to, don't even think about doing it. Because the odds of success in a startup are infinitesimally low. This has to be passion-driven, not career-driven or salary-driven. And so that's the first thing I remind our uh, students who either want to be part of a founding team or an early employee. This is not a job. Entrepreneurs are closer to artists than any other career. We make the mistake in teaching entrepreneurship and thinking that it's akin to a business school curriculum or an engineering curriculum. Entrepreneurship it just happens to sit in those schools, but truly the curriculum that it's closest to is art school. Uh, because, well, we teach you know, art appreciation, we teach art theory. Art, uh, art is really experiential, and it's passion-driven. It's not that you're going to do one code or two. I mean, you're going to be looking at a blank canvas, and the next day, there's going to be starry night, if we're lucky. The Silicon Valley playbook doesn't work in Canada. But, if you listen to Steve Blank, the leading advocate for the lean startup methodology, it hasn't really worked for founders or startup teams in Silicon Valley since about 2013. It has really morphed into a lean product launch methodology for larger, more established companies. So how does our environment differ from Silicon Valley, or New York? First, let's talk about the bad stuff. You'll probably have to develop your minimum viable product in Canada, and test it on customers in Canada. That's bad because Canadian customers may be a little different culturally than their US-based counterparts. It's also bad because selling into the US from Canada exposes your company to even greater complexity and compliance costs than you would face sticking to the Canadian market. It's also bad because you'll have to raise private equity in the US. There isn't really much private equity in Canada. Canadian investors prefer resource extraction, real estate and blue chip stocks. You have to go fishing where the fish are. That means in California and the US Northeast. But there's some good stuff too. According to a 2022 study by the Canadian Federation of Independent Business, small businesses in Canada pay about nine times as much per employee as larger businesses in terms of tax and regulatory compliance. While that sounds bad, the situation is worse in the US. In the US the difference is about 14 times as much per employee. There are some more very important advantages. If you need skilled staff, labor costs are lower. It is also easier for skilled workers to immigrate here. If you happen to find a Canadian investor, BC and Alberta both offer a refundable tax credit of 30% to local investors. But the most important advantage relates to our tax incentives for experimental development. These can result in cash refunds of more than 60% of eligible wages. That could mean your burn rate for development costs can be cut almost in half. And, the cost is lower for skilled staff to begin with. That can be important in today's higher interest rate environment. The Silicon Valley playbook doesn't work outside of Silicon Valley, London, New York or Shanghai. And, it probably never worked there either. 
The good news is that Canada has some of its own advantages. You need to build your own playbook, because they don't sell them at Walmart, or at your local college. But the most important thing is probably to determine whether you're an entrepreneur or just a business owner. And whether your business is really a lifestyle business. While sometimes a lifestyle business can morph into a growth business, it usually happens the other way around.